the thousands who will never walk through those doors, but you walk through their doors. You stand, you go to work, you go, go to a business place and you buy something at a grocery store or go downtown to a clothing store that you can carry the message. I don't mean you walk, I don't mean that you'll get your big family Bible and walk into the store when you buy your groceries next week and say, Hey, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. I don't mean that. But I do mean the way you walk and the way you act and the way you talk ought to be the kind of behavior that will magnify the Savior and folks will know whose side you're on. And when there's an issue at hand, you'll stand up and speak about it and you'll speak a good word for Jesus. I was over at a barber shop not far from here. A fellow walked in, great big blabber mouth fella, and also that blabber stomach too. And he walked in he said, Oh! Use the word God and then the word D-A-M-N at the end. Oh, it's G-D hot today. Jesus Christ, this G-D sunshine is terrible. And he started, you know, I was getting a haircut. And uh, he sat over there and he used God's name in vain for about ten minutes. And I finally looked at him and I said, you're very religious, aren't you? What do you mean? Great big guy. I said, you're very religious. He said, why? I said, you've been talking about God ever since you came in here. You must be a very religious fellow. I said, I appreciate a man who talks about God so much. I said, I'm ashamed. I haven't talked about him more. What are you talking about? I said, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. I said, you're twice as big as me. And I said to the barber, let me have your razor if you don't mind. <laughs> I said, you're twice as big as me. But I said, I'm not going to sit up here and take you cussing the best friend I've got any longer. Now, one of us is leaving. I said, Barbara, you decide which one. Now, I didn't do it until I'd taken all I could. I'm simply saying, well, you say, well, I just, I just let my light shine, shine so people can see my good works. If you don't keep your mouth moving, you don't let your light shine. There's no such thing as a shining light without a moving mouth. Now, I believe in both. I believe that your light ought to shine. I believe you ought to be honest and ought to pay your debts. And I'll say a few words about that tonight. But I'm, a, I'm weary of pastoring people in many cases that can work for 17 years at a steel mill. And folks don't even know whose side you're on. Uh, folks ought to know your stand. You ought to say, I'm going to let them know how I stand. Then there's Nicodemus and there's Obadiah. But there's another one. And that's Joseph of Arimathea. The Bible says that Joseph of Arimathea, who borrowed the tomb, or whose borrowed tomb uh, was given to our Lord for his burial, the Bible says he was the disciple secretly for fear of the Jews. Secretly for fear of the Jews. Would you pardon my vanity for a few minutes in closing as I recount a little bit? And God called me to preach. I always took my stand. In Texas, I was, I was, I was the loudmouth preacher that always fought everything that was wrong. When I got called to the First Baptist Church of Hammond, Indiana, somebody told me this was the richest church in the whole north. I wish I'd checked on it first, but uh, somebody told me this is the richest church in the entire north. They told me we had four millionaires in this church. We did. Lost them all the same Sunday. I didn't mean to. Sorry. But <clears throat> anyway, I came up here and I, I was 14 years ago this week. And the devil sat on my shoulder and said, the fellow who was mayor of that town, by the way, did you know that just before I came, the mayor of the Hammond belonged to First Baptist Church Hammond? Uh, by the way, a nice man. I'm not criticizing these people. Did you know the man who's now the president of the Cayman National Bank? And a fine man. Remember this church? And, and I'm, not, I'm not being critical of anybody. Did you know that the devil came and sat on my shoulder and said, You know, Hiles, <coughs> this is your chance. This is your chance. Did you know that a wealthy man in this church sent the pastor and his wife on a cruise every year before I came? And did you know that immediately the city of Hammond, the fathers of the city, began to whine? I'm sorry, 
uh, carrot juice and dine me, uh, orange juice and they began to whine and dine me. Did you know that almost every day some, some city father would walk in my office and won't take me out to eat lunch? Did you know that I was a special guest at the city clubs in Hammond? And the real estate board had me as their honored guest. Did you know that? And did you know that some of the wealthiest people in this town, most influential people in this town, decided to become my godfather? And the devil said, how do you like it? Huh? I said, it's fun. <laughs> Never had this before. They're always cussing me now. They're taking me out to eat. Uh, and uh, I'll never forget. One day a lady said to me, Do you plan to join a ministerial association? Well, I wouldn't join any association of preachers unless every one of them had to sign a statement. He believed every word in this book. Every word. But I didn't want, I didn't want to upset anything. I said, I haven't thought about it. She said, think about it. So I thought about it. She said, now are you? I said, well, I'll, if it's fundamental, I will. I'm still trying to hedge a bit. She said, it's not fundamental now. Are you going to join or not? Well, I was in the corner. And let me just say this very kindly. Don't ever get Jack Howells in the corner. I was in the corner. And I said, no, I'm not. Amen. And I said to her, and I said to her husband, if you ever need any business, any advice about your business, you call me, and I'll be glad to advise you, but I'm not going to advise you until you call me. Now, I said, if I ever need advice about my preaching, I'll call you. But if I call you, you keep your nose out of it. Amen. I went back to my study. I said, I'm going to be the same preacher in Hammond I was in Texas. I got on my knees over here in the same study where I am now. And I said, dear God, I'm not a great preacher and I know it. And I don't have eloquence and I know it. But they're not going to buy me. And if they turn, I've enjoyed being dying a bit. And I've enjoyed being, being sort of beloved a little bit. But they're not going to buy me. And I'll promise you, they may railroad me out of here next week. They may chase me out of town, but I'll not be bought. I'll not be bought. They're, they're not going to buy me. I'm going to stand. And God knows it's true. I've stood for 14 years for what I thought was right and for the Bible. And I can say with Paul this morning, day and night, I've worked for these years. Day and night. And I've taught you publicly and from house to house. And I've taught you with tears. And I've tried to stand for what's right. And I want you to join me. I want you to say, hey, I'll join you, preacher. We'll stand for righteousness and right. And Jesus will not be an Obadiah. We'll not be a Nicodemus. We'll not be a Joseph. We'll stand for God and stand for decency and stand for right. If they hate us, okay. But we'll stand and we'll stand. And having done all, we'll stand for God and stand up for Jesus, let our voices be heard for decency again. And to that I dedicate myself this morning again. I believe God. If there ever was a day in this world, this country's history when the voices for decency need to sound forth like a trumpet, it's today. There was a day when somebody ought to say, I'm going to stand and work. It's the day our schools have become cesspools of iniquity, sex perversion, and sex liberty, and communism, and anarchy, and revelings, and cursing, and indecency. If there was a day when young folks ought to stand at school, it's 1973. I challenge you this morning. On this August Sunday morning, 1973, to leave this place with me with a new dedication and consecration to stand up for Jesus. Amen. Not Obadiah, afraid. Not Nicodemus, silent. And not Joseph Arimathea, burying a dead Jesus. Jesus died before he stood for him.
Men, I saw my girl die. I saw her say, Daddy, I begged you and you wouldn't do it. Daddy? Daddy? I'm dying and I'm going to hell. You taught me how to live, but you didn't teach me how to die. How's your life this morning? Huh? How's your life? Dads, moms, young people, children. Let's learn to live, but let's learn to die. Our Heavenly Father.